Hi, welcome to our telehealth medicine information video. I'm Garvin and this video is on COVID-19 vaccine. So first of all, what is a vaccine? So a vaccine teaches our immune system how to create antibodies. And it is these antibodies that protect people from disease. It is much safer for our immune system and our overall health to make antibodies through vaccination rather than actually catching a virus from somebody else. Because then if you catch the virus, your immune system has to mobilize and produce large quantities of antibodies to fight the virus. You're more liable to get severe side effects. Once our immune system knows how to fight an illness or disease, this offers protection against the virus for many years. So in Ireland, in the new year, a COVID-19 vaccine, which has been developed by Pfizer and German biotech company BioNTech, will be distributed by the HSE through GPs, pharmacies and health centres. The creation of the vaccine is a monumental achievement for medical science and the data analysis shows the vaccine can prevent 95% of people from getting COVID-19, including 94% in the older age group who are most vulnerable. The vaccine has been tested in 43,500 people in six countries and no safety concerns have been raised to date. But that said, the British media reported two cases of severe allergic reaction to the vaccine in the last few days. The individuals in question received EpiPen injections and have since fully recovered. So for those of you who might be interested in some of the science behind the vaccine creation, I'll give you a bit of an overview here. So first of all, we have to start with the actual culprit itself for the virus. So the SARS-CoV-2 virus is studded with proteins that it uses to enter human cells. So in effect, the virus is like a ball and sticking out of the ball are like nails and these are protein spikes. So when someone gets infected by COVID-19, these nail-like protein structures on the virus can drill holes into human cells and inject viral material into the cell, causing all the horrible symptoms that we now associate with COVID. So these are high temperature, dry cough, lack of taste, tiredness and shortness of breath. So it's no surprise that scientists targeted these nail-like spikes on the virus in order to make a workable vaccine. The Pfizer vaccine, like the Moderna vaccine, is based on the virus's genetic instructions for building these spike proteins or drilling proteins. So the actual vaccine that Pfizer made uses messenger RNA or mRNA for short. mRNA are chemicals that directs our cells or tells the cells in our bodies to make a particular protein. So in effect, the vaccine is telling our cells to make a certain protein and this protein stops the virus from making the spikes or nails and without these spikes the viruses can't drill holes into our cells so we don't get infected. The molecule created by Pfizer is very fragile. To protect the vaccine Pfizer have wrapped the mRNA in oily bubbles made from nanoparticles. Because of their fragility, the mRNA molecules will quickly fall apart at room temperature. Because of this, Pfizer has built special containers with dry ice and thermal sensors to ensure the vaccines can be transported at minus 70 degrees Celsius to stay viable. After injection, the vaccine particles bump into cells and fuse to them, releasing the mRNA or the instruction manual of how to make a protein. The mRNA from the vaccine is eventually destroyed by the cell, leaving no permanent trace. When a vaccinated cell dies, the debris will contain many spike proteins and protein fragments, which can then be taken up by a cell of immune cells or type of immune cell called an antigen presenting cell. The cell presents fragments of the spike protein on its surface. When other cells called helper T cells detect these fragments, the helper cells can raise the alarm and help marshal other immune cells to fight the infection. 
Other immune cells called beta cells may bump into the coronavirus spikes and protein fragments on the surface of vaccinated cells. A few of the beta cells may be able to lock onto the spike proteins. If these beta cells are then activated by helper cells, they will start to proliferate and pour out antibodies that target the spike protein. So the antibodies can latch onto coronavirus spikes, mark the virus for destruction and prevent infection by blocking the spikes from attaching to other cells. So the Pfizer vaccine requires two injections given 21 days apart to prime the immune system well enough to fight off the coronavirus. But because the vaccine is so new, researchers don't know how long its protection may last. A preliminary study found that the vaccine seems to offer strong protection about 10 days after the first dose, compared with people taking a placebo. So it's possible that in the months after vaccination, the number of antibodies and killer T cells will drop. But the immune system also contains special cells called memory beta cells and memory T cells that might retain information about the coronavirus for years. So one question we've been asked at the pharmacy, are there any side effects to the Pfizer vaccine? Sometimes, but they are mild. In the trial, the vaccine was generally well tolerated and an independent data monitoring committee reported no serious safety concerns. The worst side effects were fatigue and headache and this after the second dose. About 4% of people reported fatigue and 2% a headache. Other than side effects were pain at the injection site and muscle pain. And these are common reactions you would have with any vaccination. Older adults actually reported fewer and milder side effects. So does it protect everybody, the vaccine? The answer is no. In the trials, about half the people who were given the vaccine ate, caught COVID-19 and one became seriously ill. In contrast, 164 people who received the placebo fell ill and nine severely. It isn't known why some people didn't respond to the vaccine, but a success rate of 95% is about as good as you get with any vaccine. And finally, so some of my customers are worried about getting an injection of mRNA, that putting genetic material into our bodies could in some ways be harmful for us. So my response to them is this, if you have ever gone swimming in the sea, and swallowed a mouthful of water. Well, you have just swallowed 10 billion viruses. So that's 10,000 million pieces of genetic material in a mouthful of seawater. So with the vaccine, we're talking about one piece of genetic material and a mouthful of seawater is 10,000 million pieces. So the vaccine is crucial to get our country back to work. So the sooner it's available, the better for everybody and the better for everybody's quality of life. I will finish with this. Vaccines do work and are probably one of the greatest achievements in medical science to date. So the smallpox vaccine alone has saved 200 million lives since 1980. It's hard to argue against data like this. And that's only one vaccine. 200 million lives saved. So that brings this video to an end. If you have any questions, you can contact us through our website, mytelehill.info, or call to Lynch's Pharmacy, Douglas Cork, or ring 021-436-6923 to find out more. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and stay informed.